What's up, everybody? I am Johnny Christ, and this is Drinks with Johnny. Thank you so much for checking out this episode. I'm super excited. I've been trying to get this one for a couple months now. Um, we're finally getting it on the schedule. We're here with Shavo, you know, from System of a Down, North Kingsley, entrepreneur, 22 Red. We're going to get into all those things. Shavo, how are you doing today? Thanks for finally being on the show, man. Good, my brother. Good, man. It's been a long time coming, right? Um, we've been trying to get this done for a few months, like you said, but I'm glad our schedule has worked out. Uh, I just realized today's my kid's birthday, too, on top of everything. But oh, I'm glad shit. I have a day off. Yeah, yeah. So I have, like, I had a few things to handle today, but I got those done. And it's my daughter's three-year-old, three, uh, third birthday. Oh, congratulations. I got yeah, a four-year-old son. Uh, these are fun ages, as they say. Is she, your yeah, own, yeah. is she your only daughter? No, I have my, we yeah, have one daughter and two boys. One daughter and two boys. Oh, and how old are the boys? Seven and nine. Seven and nine, and then all the way down to three. Wow, you got a... Yeah. You got a hectic schedule, man. How are you making all this shit happen? Ah, you know, it's tough, bro. It's, it is <laughs> tough, but I take little breaks, little like every few months we go somewhere yeah. for a couple of days and like kind of unwind. It's very important you do that for yourself, especially if you're so busy, you know, because then I thought I could do it for a while. I was just like, oh, I can have five jobs and three kids and not and, and, and be sane. But yeah. It doesn't work out that way because at some point it builds and then something goes wrong with one work something here and all of a sudden it just becomes like too much for you when it's too many things piled up in one. So, uh, taking a look, small little breaks. I just got back from a little trip we took with the kids, went out, um, got, got a little villa somewhere by the beach and just chilled for a few days. It was such needed calmness. Yeah. You know? But it's still, the kids were going crazy, but it's just like, <laughs> You could give them their video games for a second and then walk away. That's <laughs> that <always laughs> uh, dude. I don't know what they do. I don't know what these uh, parents did before these uh, for these all these tablets. Because I mean, you, you say you're not going to use them when, when your, your kids first come around, and then you're like, well, I also don't want them to fall behind too because everyone else has got these tablets and you That's need to know right. technology. So you just got to well. I mean, I guess you just got to keep them well rounded. You know, you I think that's medium, the key. bro. I was with, I'm totally with you on what I said. I don't like them being on screen time constantly. But I think when the pandemic hit uh, and, and they were home a lot and I realized, see, we live on a street where actually kids play. Uh, it's a gated community, so kids play and there's kids with bikes, skateboards, scooters. Yeah. Right now there's kids out there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so they still, they, they do go outside and do what they have to do. But I realized the kids from school who don't have that, like their friends from school, they're on these games, like they're on this uh, Roblox, they're on Fortnite, and then yeah. they got this new Among Us thing going on, which is kind of cool, by the way. Um, and no, I really dig Among Us. Yeah, um, yeah. And so at first I was fighting it. You know, I was, uh, you can't, you know, too much screen time. But and then I realized, like, that they do fall behind in technology. Their friends, like, you know, they're playing all day, every day. They don't have outside. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm kind of giving them a little more space with it. I just don't like when they become, you know, you know, I've had issues with things back in the day where I like something too much, addiction stuff, you know, vibes. Yeah. I see that, you know, now that I'm who I am, the way I am, clean of everything, I kind of, I see that thing with video games and, and screen time, you know, when they're on it, they get that thing that like, I need, yeah. this, is, this is my life. This is without this, that like, you, you try to take it away from that at a time and they freak out. There's yeah. this like, look in their face that I've seen before with people. Yeah. With other of course, With other but, things too. Yeah. But yeah, yeah but I've it's, seen it in my kid too. Yeah. It's that same thing. Like when they wake up, they're cool. And then they're, once they get that screen time, they become a little different after it, mm -hmm. it takes an hour to like adjust back into normalcy, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a thin line, bro. It's a fine line between timing and how long you let them play and how long you don't. And then they feel left out from their friends. They um, they feel left out from the game. They have to finish. The, yeah, I don't know, bro. Yeah, no, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. But I'm glad. Uh -huh. you, I'm glad you live in a you live in a similar neighborhood. Then mine's not gated, but it is a similar neighborhood where there's other young children in, around, and we get outside every day okay. about the same time. I got dogs. I take them out and watch watch the kids play so and stuff. It's, it's so necessary in 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 uh, today's world. It's it's rare, bro. You know, people come over and they're like, Oh my God, your kids could play outside. It's flat. I'm like, yeah, like since I moved here because I knew yeah. that I was going to have kids and you know, I can't be living on Hills like this anymore where kids can't play, you know, where are you in the world right now? I'm in Burbank In Burbank. Okay, cool. Burbank. Yeah. 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 One of the spots in Burbank. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's my family had, you know, 
well, it's near my mom. Okay, I moved perfect. here when my wife got pregnant. I was like, move closer to mom. Yep, <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to need some help. <laughs> need some help. So I, was like, I left everything where I was living in Calabasas, and I was like, moved, found the nearest comfortable, cool spot near my folks. That's awesome. That's really yeah. cool. I'm glad, I'm glad you found that. Um, let's get into everything. I was watching a, a video from Prohibited um, on YouTube. It was like two years ago, and it kind of, uh, you know, kind of s- – speaks to what everything that you're doing now still right um yeah uh, although although all the writing that you constantly do as a musician and what um i mean i know that you guys uh, you, you've known the guys in north kingsley and had that project for a little longer than that um but can you speak to you know go into a little bit more depth i know that like the the, the name is from the two places you guys grew up and uh, the singer was actually more of a, a metal punk guy that uh, just started to go into some rap and shit. So it's like, uh, yeah, dude. And, 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 and do that hip hop world. Can you speak to a little bit about how this project came together? Yeah. Well, at first, you know, um, in, I think it was 2016, I got sober off of some like pills. Uh, mm-hmm. Cause I was, I, I was taking Xanax for a, a long time that the doctor had prescribed because I had anxiety. That anxiety turned to withdrawals, but I thought it was still anxiety. So I kept taking the little pills so I could be normal. Yeah. This was for 15 years, bro. And uh, at some point I realized, man, this is when I don't take it, it's, I don't feel right. I don't feel normal. It's like night. It, life is not good without it. And that's not, that's being dependent. Yes. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate with this, bro. This is something that a lot of people do until today. And I know they do. And I, people hit me up every, every time I speak about it, people hit me up and they're like, dude, what you said really hit home. Um, how can I do this? And I give them advice, bro. So if I can help anyone, Dude, listen to me, okay? So I went yeah. in, I went in for 45 days and uh, came back out a new person, but I was kind of fearful of things. You know, it was like, I said this in another interview. I said, uh, Xanax is like this, like, compressor. We're bass players, so you get it, right? We use compressors all the time for our sound, right? Bass. Yes. So it's like you do that, and it sounds thicker and better and bolder. Uh, when you do that to emotions, like, you're only thinking that you're taking this part out, which is the lows, right? When I feel sad or anxiety, I'll take a pill and it makes it better. Um, it also takes the highs out, bro. So when the highs go out and the lows go out, you become monotone guy. Yeah. And I'm a very, I love, I'm an emotional guy, bro. I like talk, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a doer. I'm a go getter. I, I talk, I'm very passionate about what I do. Shit was going away, bro. So I realized, so I went in, I got it taken care of. I'm, it's been five years, six years, almost clean. Um, Oh yeah, man. Congratulations on that. Thank you, bro. Thank you. When I did that, when that went away, all these like, ambitions came out in my system. I was like, Oh shit. Now I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to start a new band. I want to start a new project. I want to, I want to start a new business. I want to, you know, I want to take care of my kid. You know, it's just all those lows and highs that were gone came back and I'm like, fuck dude, there's so much I want to do. And I had to compress a little personally. I had to do it. But all right. So I was going to be, I started doing logic pro just to like produce tracks on my own. Cause I had been doing that with like RZA back in the day when I did the chosen album with RZA that never dropped, but we have an album that. <laughs> yeah. I was going to, we're but... going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Cause I, I, I still think I love all the stuff that you've put out uh, in the last year with North Kingsley, but that signature false idols with it. We have a signature Shavo bass part that ends up with this hip hop kind of thing on it. And then of course RZA, uh, we got to yeah. get into all that, but let's get back to the beginnings here. Yeah. So RZA and I did an album a while ago, but the album never dropped it. It was like we were doing it. So anyway, I learned how to produce and make my own beats and kind of like arrange and track. And I used what I've learned from system recordings of what I've watched Rick do and Darren and Sarah and everybody. And kind of like that became a part of me, part of my DNA. And I started doing it back then. So I wanted to get back to that. And I want to use a new program. I was a big Pro Tools guy before, but I saw yeah. that there's all this new stuff out. So I was like, Logic, that's where I want to go. And um, I was working with a friend in his studio and I met Sorrow, who's our producer now for North Kingsley, who's the in-house guy that does the band member that does all the beats and yeah, sound and yep. all the stuff that I, you know, I was going to be doing, but he came to teach me. So I, he was really good at logic. And I was like, why don't you teach me how to do this, bro? Um, and he was honored. He was like, fuck yeah, bro. You know, he, was, he used to be an old fan, you know, system fan. We became friends though, real quick. Yeah. Through the whole process of like trying to learn. We worked on some music all of a sudden together, bro. And while I'm learning, we like did these awesome, weird, cool genre beats, you know? And I was like, maybe we could, this could be a thing. Cause I love to collaborate, bro. I'm a, I'm not a big like solo artist. I don't like doing everything and saying, here's me. You know, I like to work with someone and like, here's part of me and that person. 
put it together. You know, it's like I think team teamwork is rad. I've always been a good team player. Yeah. So I was like, maybe we'll start something like a production crew, a unit, something. So it started off that then, and he used to work with this dude named Ray, who's the singer, um, Ray Hawthorne from Jersey. And um, he had started rapping, I guess, and he was a singer from before. Anyhow, long story short, bro, this guy came in and he just kind of like really fit the mold of like what we're doing. So it was like this new thing was born. But I was still hesitant to like call it a band, you know, because yeah. I'm still interested in And I'm like, I haven't done a side project yet besides that RZA thing, which was like, like 12 years ago. Anyways, bro, so it became, it developed into songs. And I think the first song that we developed was this song that hasn't been released yet. It's called Kids Love Guns. And uh, that was one that like made me like, think. I was like, dude, this is cool. Like, I can back this. This isn't just like me making beats. This is an actual like good sound that we can develop and br- grow from. You know, it's a yeah. good starting point. And so we did. And we're that was about two and a half years ago. Uh, we've been developing and growing. It's like we're still at embryo stages, you know, because we've only dropped six songs through my personal uh, brand, Twenty Two Media. Yeah, uh, I'm funding it all. Like we haven't really gone done crazy marketing. It's all me and my social media, a little bit of ad money on, you know, YouTube stuff. And yeah. but that's it, bro. Never nothing huge. You know, I have publicists that done interviews. I'm doing this with you. Yeah. Just stuff yeah. like this, just natural, organic shit. Uh, I think it's time, though. I'm holding back. So we dropped six songs in two separate pieces, volume one and volume two. I was going to do a three and four, but we just started writing so much more music. I kind of feel like it could be an album at this point. Are you ready? Yeah, I was just going to ask, are you ready to, to do a full album with uh, North Kingsley? We have enough material made, music done for a full album now, but I don't know how the... See, it's like the audience is different nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Like They don't have good attention span, you know? So it's like you give well, there's so much out there. there. There's so much content from all from so many different artists and everyone's fighting for your attention all at the same yeah. time. It's just a different so, world. So dropping a new album off of a new genre of music might be a little, you know, I, I don't want to release 10 songs and have only three songs be listened to. I want all 10 to be heard because when I, when we write music, it's more about make it like every song is a single in my head. Every song is a song that deserves a video. Every song is a song that deserves a radio, you know, or whatever people to listen to. It's, there's no fillers, you know? Yeah. So I'll decide on what we're going to do. I want to get a new distribution. I, I want to do something real, you know, like when I say real, I mean, not just do it alone. Like partner Bring up in some company. partners. Yeah. Yeah. Some distribution companies, maybe, maybe not a full label, but like, cause, I mean, label. yeah. Cause labels, I mean, they, you know, they're, you know, they're not really as necessary as they once were in a lot of ways. So, right. uh, right. I mean, a distribution company and, and you could still, you know, be hands on it. I could definitely respect where you're coming from on that. Necessary. The, the hands on is necessary because, you know, I've been told what to do before and we didn't do it. You know what I mean? It worked well, uh, not doing what was told to do. So with my other stuff, of course. And so, uh, yeah, just following the same footsteps, trying to figure out a way to do that. Uh, so we're at a point where I go in there now and it's like, we kind of, it's kind of like a work group, like a, like a workhorse, bro. Uh, they've got what's going on. They hand it to me. I'm, I've been writing differently with this project, which is really a fun, cooler. I feel like it's very, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's like free. It's, it's, it's very uh, free. It's not contrived. I'm not writing at home saying, will this work for the band? Oh uh, yeah, no, totally, man. I, I, I know, I know how that can be sometimes, you know, like even if you really like something, you're like, I'm going to show it to them, but like, I don't know if it's just even going to fit. How's it going to work? Yeah. <laughs> That's not really system. You know, with system, I would write shit, go in and, I would have to do the whole presentation and like make sure I came off the right way or else because yeah. everybody's got songs, bro. It's like Darren's got 30 songs already written. Sergio's got two, three himself. Like now I'm like coming up with, so it's like, it was, it was more of a like, Oh, totally stressful. You know, this is more, they'll play me some beats or some vocal lines and I'll go in and I'll grab my guitar or bass and just shit comes out while I'm being inspired. So it's like on the spot stuff happening. And I all do like, and what a logic pro has, which is you can just loop, that part and just keep mm. playing and it'll just track like one after another. Then you could take the best parts of what you did. So I don't even care if I'm fucking up. I'll just play until I. Yeah. Hear. Until you hear something that's like inspiring and you're like, that's what I've been missing. That's, and that's then you the go part. back in and you fix it a little bit. <laughs> Either fix it or write to it. You know, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's a cool so, process. That, that sounds like, what, that sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds a little bit more, like you said, freeing and artistic than trying to write in, in, in not that you would write 
in a box necessarily for a band like System of a Down because, I mean, you guys are so eclectic and have done so much, you know, cutting edge shit over the years. But um, I can imagine having just, I mean, I was talking to somebody else on the show about this and uh, he was just saying how, you know, having side projects is really good for your main project or whatever your oh. passion is at because it gets out some of that other shit that, you know, isn't making it through the filter of, of whatever your main project is. 100% what you said is correct because I just wish all the band members felt that way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everyone has their own thing going on. Yeah. But it, we should be like doing that and then coming together again and doing, you know, what we want to do for system. But, you know, at the moment, that's not the case. So um, I'll take what I can get. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, totally. Yeah. And you're, so being, and you're super thing. busy with everything too. I mean, Dude. yeah, I mean, we haven't even got into 22 Red yet. But I want to yeah. I want to continue on with the as I said before the North Kingsley and get back into the RZA and a chosen and you know the whole when did you guys work on that Are we going to get that record from twelve years ago I don't know dude. we have it all done This is the problem man You know who mixed it was Logan Mater bro Oh wow. uh, from uh, Machine Head and uh, uh, Once Human uh, his new group uh, which I played a, for like one day in <laughs> Oh you <laughs> did I, Yeah I didn't even I'm not I'm not I'm not familiar I, I mean I know M- Machine Head we. We've known those guys for a lot of years, but uh, yeah, yeah, not the. Not so he the has a new group. It's a it's a crazy like, co- complicated death metal vibe with a female singer. Oh, cool. uh, ridiculous! It's really good shit. Uh, but anyway, so he mixed it, and it was really good for me to have like a hip hop album mixed by a metal guy. You know? Yeah, like, that's that's really interesting. Cool. I like that. So, but what happened is we lost the hard drive that it was mixed on. Oh no! Something happened. It either burned, crashed. Something happened. I have all of the stems. I have that at studio in my old computer and it's all there, but it needs to be remixed. Yeah. That thing it needs to be, but I love how it came out. The yeah. way we have have you talked to Logan about coming back on and doing it again? Not really. Cause we both are so busy at the moment. Stuff, yeah. I have been talking to Riza and Riza's really like, he loves the shit and he keeps saying, um, we should do something with it. And I agree we should, because nothing like it has been dropped ever since we did it. It's not like, it's old. It doesn't sound old at all. No, it's it's it, 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 it's more timeless. It's not like it's uh, yeah. I got no, you. It's its own thing, bro. It's like me making beats for the first time, producing the best producer ever, which is RZA. He told me he's like, there's only two, three people that have ever produced me. I said, who is like your one, Prince Paul, and I think Mathematics. I'm not sure. Okay, but that's like pretty crazy shit right there. Yeah, to be in that group, you know, Prince Paul for God's sake, that's some grave digger shit. Yeah, and so um. Yeah, I'm I'm honored for that, and That's really I was cool. that was a time in my life that I learned a lot, bro. Just by hands on doing, you know, they everything was done at my house uh, studio back in Cal, you know, where I, when I lived in Calabasas, and Riza and I were like two miles apart, neighbors. So and we were both single at the time, so we were at each other's just, houses, just partying, and just partying day. and making beats, partying and making music, bro. It was that's, that's what it was, partying and making music. And how did how did how did you, how did the uh, relationship, the, the friendship, start though? Like, the, what's the precipice of it? Well, System was asked to do a song for a loud, uh, you know, Loud Rock's uh, soundtrack. It was a compilation of songs that, done by Loud Records, yeah, okay. like Mocky, Wu Tang. Uh, so we chose Shame. We covered Shame by Wu Tang. Uh, and um, I really wanted one of them to be on it uh, because, you know, with the words, you know, shame on a nigga, the stat, you know, I was like, probably I, shouldn't be I saying know what that, shit. Yeah, yeah. I know what that means. And I know it's like shame on a brother and my homie, you know what I mean? But but it doesn't work coming know, out of your it, mouth or, or Serge's kind of mouth. Weird, especially today. I didn't know back then it was going to, that was two, 20 years ago, by the way. Exactly. It was like, too. It was, about, yeah, no, it's where the, the demographic was, has changed in the world. It was a lot cooler back then to be able to say, you know, I mean, we have people like six, nine, who's not black saying that word like 10,000 times in one song. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, anyways, but I really have respect for people, bro. In every culture and every Absolutely. race. You know I mean, I mean I'm, I'm Armenian for God's sake. We've been freaking traumatized my whole <laughs> yeah. forever with the Turks and all that shit. So, um, yeah, man, I know how that feels. So I wanted to be respectful, of even course. though we were, because that's one of our, that's a great song. And it was like ballsy yeah. to do it. Number one. So anyway, I went, I had met method man and red man through a tour we did together with limp biscuit called the billionaire pirate. So there was a method man show happening in Hollywood at the house of blues. I was backstage hanging with meth. We were walking on stage together and I saw RZA and I was like, fuck, oh, there's the RZA. So I'm going to like get out this, I'm going to make uh, meet him, you know, I'm, I'm going to make myself present. And so I did, I said, 
my name is Shalvo. I play for System Over Down, man. I'm a big fan of yours. And at that time, I was a Wu-Tang freak. Like, I had, like, downloaded lyrics. I used to read the lyrics, try to, like, break it down because you guys are so fucking, like, talented when it comes to words and beats, of course, but words, yeah. bro. Um, so uh, he was like, yeah, man, I heard that with Rick Rubin. I'm like, yeah. He was like, you guys are balls of steel. He said that. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, bro, but listen – I don't want to disrespect any older gods who don't understand that I understand, you know, that might not know I know. So I'd love one. He goes, respect. He goes, give me your number. I gave him my number and I was like, ah, this dude's never going to hit me up, right? Two weeks later, they were doing the, I think the W record down at, in North Hollywood. Yeah. And he hit me up. He goes, come down. Let's make your track happen. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, that's so right. I, by myself, I fucking ran over there. I told the other guys, like, you handle this. You're the hip hop head in this band. So I ran over there, um, met the whole Wu, besides old Dirty. He was in prison at the time. Oh, okay. Uh, God rest his soul. Um, yeah. And um, just kind of like he pulled the track up and he's like, what do I do? Because we had already made the track. Every verse was taken. Every chord, We had done everything. And I was like, why don't you just mute Sarah's second verse and go like full blast something brand new? He's like, all right. So he goes, give me 20 minutes. Bro, the dude did that whole verse, the second verse by himself. Right there on the spot, 20 minutes. Jesus. I walked there, it was there. So I was like, throw some Bobby Digital vibes on there. So he went, you know, he did the sounds and shit. He did that. That version never made it because Rick, who produced it, executive produced it, thought that he was fucked up and he was making those sounds. I was like, nah, dude, that's one of his personas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of his, that's pretty person. funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we, I only have that version. I have a version with him doing all this digital outtakes and stuff on it. Really cool shit. So that's really cool. Uh, that's a little trivia. Anyway, so uh, that's when I met everybody. We became friends, bro. Um, that's great. We've been friends. And then ever from since, there, but, yeah. And then from there, yeah. it's just making music yeah. together and partying when you're single dude, and, we, and we 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 That's awesome. Dude, then years later, he had a kid. His boy was my ended up being my ring boy when we got married. Oh shit! That's really married. cool. Yeah, so I mean, we're that close, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, we're yeah. still at each other's houses all the time. and You know, when you hear the music and you see you guys together, it's like, okay, they're, they're buddies, but you never know how close really until you ask the question, right? So, exactly. yeah, so he's like, a ring bearer. That's friends. awesome. Yeah, it's like that. So our kids are becoming like our tight now because my kids are growing up now to be, the, you know, his age, Bra's age. So really a cool vibe. And so when we did a show, when we did North Kingsley, you know, we were talking with Rizzo one day. I was like, yo, I got this new project. He goes, where do I sign up? You know, like <laughs> I'll do a track. I'm like, fuck yeah, bro. Hell yeah. That's bro. rad. So he came in and he's, he spit a bunch of words and we fit them on false. He loved false idols. He loved that track. It's a, good, it's so, a great track. It was a good pick for it by Riza. I mean that I, again, like that. I love the, I love the hip hop vibe, but then like you still got this, uh, you know, a little, uh, you know, uh, as I said before, kind of a classic Chavo bass line that comes in that like kind of like, and it just kind of has the chords. It kind of kind of jumps around a little bit, nice and like kind of dark. And then you got, yeah. you got the hip hop. I end up playing on minors constantly. It's just my, it's just my go to vibe. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's kind of most of us in the hard rock scene, right? When we've been yeah, writing right? it in hard rock for a long time, that's kind of. It's kind of hard to write a hard rock song in major, but I mean, <laughs> you're right. You're at least going to be bright and happy. And <laughs> you could you could bring it out in moments, but not the whole song. <laughs> that's that's the point. You got to be, be able to do it in the right amount of time before you like, so you don't o o overshadow the darkness because <laughs> you need the darkness. Yeah. Of course. Well, I like so. your story though about Rizzo just knocking that out in 20 minutes because that just shows like how different we can be in, as artists. Like. Not that I, I'm a lyricist at all. I don't, I don't do lyrics at all. I'm, I would be yeah. terrible at it. But I do. I have an appreciation for it, and I have appreciation for just an artist in general. So when, you hear, when I hear someone that can just knock stuff out of what they do in like 20 minutes or something like that, like whether it be a guitar player, a drummer, uh, a lyricist, whatever it is, I, it always mm -hmm. like makes me go like, damn, I really need to get back to work because I can't do that shit. Like I can't just go in in 20 oh, minutes I, and do it. I have to constantly like really mull over things, listen to it for a few days and make sure that I really like it before it's something that I want to you know, gotcha. put anywhere. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, I, I believe in that too. With North, I do a lot of, um, I do my parts. Like I said, we do them on the spot. Which is awesome. And I have to come back to it. Like I did a track the other day. And, dude, when I was doing it, it was like, that was it. That was the shit. It was, like, fucking done, right? I even posted up one of the riffs, uh, I think, recently. Like, what do you guys think? New North Kingsley. Then I went back and listened to the whole song. I was like, fuck no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hell no. 
even even my it seemed like a like, good idea at the time. Yeah, they were like, "You've done ten times better than." That. I'm like, "I know, I know. What the fuck is that? I thought it was so good, but it wasn't." Yeah, uh, but it, but it caught a moment, and I'm gonna use it in that moment that I did post. Yeah, in there, but throughout the whole song, it didn't work as a song. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, it's it's amazing how many times that happens in 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 a lot of different writing processes. I mean, as as I talk to other artists too, and I know in Avenged, we we we'll go through and work on work on an idea for a song for a few months, and then the parts just ain't coming together. And we just, even if there's like something special there, like that we really like, just like yeah, but we can't figure out what to do with it. Scrap it. Scrapping it, you're like fuck. Yeah, it 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 hurts, but then you like, but then you like look back and you're like, that was the right thing to do, but it hurts at the moment. You're like, oh. No, we have like. There's like 15 system songs that were scrapped like that. That until today, there's like little leaks out there, of certain ones, and the yeah. fans of Alaska. So, do a new album since you don't have new material. Do an album of dope. And, and my whole thing is, is like, dude, if they were like if not were good, then why are they going to be? Good? Why would I release all, them on one full record? Be our like after five rec- after 15 years of no music, we're going to drop you our freaking not even B sides like our our throwaways like. What a, like that's like a uh, a career killer, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> after fifteen years, we bombed, you know. Like, yeah, you know? no, it's kind of it's kind of yeah. I mean, you listen to the opinions. I know you guys have gotten it over the last fifteen years and stuff, and especially over the last fifteen years from you know two thousand five with uh, Hypnotize and Mesmer, and then you know the whole world has changed with uh, with the ad- advancement of social media and everything like that. Dude, so I'm sure you guys it see all it all began. the time. Yeah. yeah, it started then, you know, and it's like I think it's kind of like kind of a culprit for me of like in, like inside band not conflict but like i feel like someone does an interview mm-hmm. the interview gets paraphrased something is said that was said a certain way in context right you take it out of context it's kind of rude yeah absolutely that's what made the headline then the other guy reads it and goes why is he talking shit but he's not talking shit he's explaining something if you read the whole interview you'd know he's not talking shit but that's, I think, where a lot of stuff, it's not just my band. I'm sure a lot of people get put through the ringer. Oh, dude. That, you know? Yeah, we've been, doing, we've been doing that for years. It's kind of the reason why I started doing this podcast. It started yeah. out as something different. I was just going to have fun making drinks with my, with my buddies and maybe yeah. meet some new people or reconnect with some people. And then I learned what podcasting was. And I was like, well, why would I? I mean, I'm not the kind of guy that's going to try and get a headline. I don't have an editor to answer to. It's not going through that. Why don't I just get the realness? Like if, if you and I were to run into each other at a festival and we like had a, you know, we just had a chat out. Out, out in the back, you know, like, I love that. That's what I, that's what why I want to, that's what I want to give the listeners. A, a Watch what will happen though. Watch what will happen. I said a few things, right? Yeah. Cloud system on this podcast, right? And when we're talking as friends, watch them yeah. take this little piece out. They'll be like, Oh, Shabo on the drinks. <laughs> of John. Oh, they did that to John. Man. The John- band hates each other because of uh, because of being uh, look. I just said that band hates each other. I didn't say we do, <laughs> but they're gonna paraphrase that we do because we don't. We love each other. No, uh, but they're gonna take that little blurb and say, "Look what he said," and then the band's gonna come to me and be like, "Did you say that, bro?" Because we don't hate each other. But no, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, no, and it'd just be like uh, for everyone that thinks that they're like. If you're reading this on uh on a Loudwire, you found this on a, from Loudwire. Just listen to the whole blabbermouth thing. Blabbermouth and shit. <laughs> <laughs> blabbermouth, the worst one of them. But yeah, no, I mean Ooh. that happened with John Domayan. He was on uh, your boy, uh, your buddy John, drummer, was on um, when we were able to do him in person, and uh, I got a little too drunk. It was when I was just starting out. It was pretty funny. But uh, yeah, okay. we he came over and he said something about your guys' last show that you played uh, before that time, and he was. He was like, he wasn't talking serious. He's like, I just don't think we were ready for it. And I didn't, it wasn't my favorite show. And then it went on to like this whole thing. And like everybody. Oh, <laughs> well, let's see what they say about this one now. Let's see what they take yeah. from what I said. Well, we'll have know. to make, we'll have to poke fun out of it uh, from our social for videos sure. on that too. <laughs> 100%. We'll take the headline and be like, like false, but a big circle. Huh? <laughs> that's anyway, pretty funny. So that's the thing. So uh, back to North Kingsley. Uh, yeah. The, or Ray, our vocalist, like he's actually the new vibe of North Kingsley after we did those. It was like a trial, the first six songs, you know? Um, I feel like the new stuff is a little edgier, mm-hmm. heavier. I'm using way more guitar in the newer songs. Cool. Um, yeah. And he's singing a lot more, which I'm really loving. So I'm kind of pushing. I'm like, sing more, sing more. Because it's becoming, it's becoming an, it's, it's, its own thing, you know, where yeah. hip hop, his rap is like, a part of what he does, but it's not what he does. And he's doing this more like catchy vocals that land on the heavy beats that 
sorrow creates and and my melodic weird bass it's cool man it's like coming out really cool so i love seeing growth you know i love to see growth and like if i'm digging it i'm happy you know because that's me you know so i event you know you look at what you create and down the line it's like you're mostly creating for yourself too you know you're not just creating for an audience you're creating for yourself and you want to be happy with what you drop and what you're releasing and what people are hearing so i'm becoming so happy and so content with what's happening uh, recently in the studio. I, like I have a studio session after this and I'm so looking forward to it. That's awesome. You know, cause I know I'm going to go work on that song that, uh, that didn't work. Do you, do you have a home studio or, or are you going, you guys all meeting in somewhere? Yeah. I have a home studio that I never use. I kind of use it for my office where I'm at right now. I have a studio like a, across from me, which is like, you know, I have my screen, I have my logic yeah, more of a writing out. studio, more of a writing yeah, studio. But I don't, I haven't used it much, man. It's like, cause yeah. I have three kids and yeah. it's not like, and I'm not separate from the house. I'm actually in the house and they love music. So it's like they hear dad playing, boom, they're in the room listening in there. So it's like, it's hard to focus in here. So totally. I have to go to my studio that I have down the street um, that I let the guys use. It, it became the North. It was my old studio that I was going to, you know, how I started the whole thing about me being a producer again. Yeah. It was that studio that I got for that purpose, but we, we've been using it for North Kingsley ever since. And it's oh, perfect. Awesome. That's cool. Is it, are you, are you, uh, are you guys doing any live drums on this stuff or is it? No is live it, drums, bro. No live. I feel like if we added the live drums, but you know, don't, don't think it'll never happen because it might happen live. Uh, yeah. But if we bring live drums, I feel like it'll turn to rap metal and I don't want to do rap metal. I, yeah. You want to the- done, you know, that's like 20 years ago. God. And I love, I like, I appreciated some of the rap metal out there, like the raid shit, of some course. of the old biscuit stuff, some of the, you know, some, some of the stuff was really amazing. But I don't want to regurgitate shit. So this is more like heavy hip hop, you know? It's yeah. like we're adding like yellow, that. yeah, heavy music to hip hop beats, heavy hip hop. Because dude, some of that trap shit is dark and grimy and heavy yeah. and punk rock. It's like what I love, you know. So you know, if you could take out the bullshit that they add to the, <laughs> you know, there's some really great foundation shit. Yeah. So I'm taking that and putting music on top of that that I naturally do, and then Ray and Sara are just focused and. They, they're like chameleon. Yeah. Really yeah, that's awesome. You just mentioned that that you you might have it live. Like, so you're saying, are you do you have plans to when things get back to normal actually tour with uh, North Kingsley or play some shows? One hundred. The the whole idea was to drop this shit exactly a year ago. It was going to be April twenty second on my birthday of last year. Twenty. Yeah, that's right. You got a birthday coming up in a, yeah, in a couple a weeks. Here, happy birthday, man. Getting older. Huh? <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you. So it was supposed to drop on my birthday last year. And that's the pandemic hit like late March. So we kind of pushed it. Didn't expect any of this to happen throughout the year. So we were kind of just dropping as we could. We were, it was going to be like April 22nd. Then that didn't work. We're going to do March 28th. And that's when the fucking George Floyd shit happened and the riots. And so then, okay, fuck now. Now what? So then we dropped it in August. We dropped it in August with no touring, no, no like supporting. It was, it's weird. How do you drop music in a pandemic with, so we just did it as just, See what happens, you know. Let's just mm-hmm. give it away and see what happens. Did that. Um, then the last three we did in December with again no live stuff. But the original plan was to have a bunch of music. Remember, I told you we write it in the studio. It's happening live, so we yeah. have to, we have to learn how we're gonna do it live on stage. So we were we're actually starting that like very soon of going through all our tracks and like getting the live room in the studio set up and. It's just the three of us, remember. So we got to figure out who does what. There's two. There's a bass and a guitar all the time. So we don't have a bassist or a guitar player. It's just me doing both. So I figure we probably will have to get someone else to come yeah. in and play either bass or guitar in certain. Because I, I still don't know what song, what, what I'm going to play on stage. Like there's certain songs I want to play the bass. Well, you just got to find I'm find someone that, uh, that compliments that and that can do both, you know. And that's, then you guys swap back gonna... and forth. I think that'd be a really, that'd be unique all... and kind of a cool thing to say. You know, Cause every once in a while they, they, they do like, you know, you do a little bit of that, you know, in bands and stuff like for like a song or two, but if it was like part of the act, part of your lives, they, always changing cool. up would be great. Yeah. yeah so and that'd be really fine, cool. man. That's the, but I don't know, man, there's a few new drummers that are like pretty much like they're hip hop drummers, but actual live. I feel like I should reach, I've reached out to one kid. He's really amazing. I'm going to see, but I don't know. I still know what, what we're going to do yet. So I really don't want to, set a goal yet of the yeah, drummer no, of I kind of start electronic and see where it goes because i love the electro aspect of the unit you know i do love what sorrow does sorrow brings all that in and yeah you're doing so good i kind of want to 
keep it where it is instead of changing the dynamics of the sound, you know? Of course. Now, yeah. keeping a V drummer in, you know, with V drums, that would be different too because then we use all the sounds we already have. It, yeah, and he'd just be live. playing the pads. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see, bro. It's it's just, it's all out there. And it's kind of like, like we're, we're kids in a candy store and we have to just figure out which candy we eat, you know? Have you guys, uh, have you guys like when you're, uh, I guess it wouldn't be the same for electric or the, or the lyrics, but when you're laying down these uh, bass and guitar riffs, are, are you filming yourself the whole time? Because I know that that helps me out later. Like if I'm like, I have to go relearn something before we go play live. I'm like, um, if I miss it, I'm like, oh, I wish I had a, I had a fucking camera on my, you know, on my hands, man. I wish I did. I didn't. <laughs> but what I do is I'm pretty like, I don't play with notes. So it's pretty much ear. Anytime I've learned something, it's either it's ear. I just yeah. find the first note and then I can go around it and then it comes back. So when, cause sometimes I've gone back to like retract some stuff or play some stuff for like the videos. When the videos are, when we do, do the videos, we have to, I have to re-remember the riffs. Yeah, of course. Kind of the riffs, you know? And uh, so I just learned them like that, you know? Yeah. Just kind just of, by ear, oh, yeah. Learn little parts and then it all comes back to me. But uh, yeah, I wish I did record everything, bro. Like my hands, but I do have some, I do have yeah. some, like, you know, you know how it is having digital video. It's just, you have hours of footage. How you going to leave? Yeah. Where are you going to put it off? <laughs> the camera, you just put, this is this session and this is that session. And you had it in a little half an hour, one hour tape. Yeah. Now it's like thousand hours in one hard drive. It's kind of hard to go through unless you actually went there and you dated it and, which I don't, I'm not a good organizer <laughs> I need a to organize me. So yeah, that's, what, that's something I lack, you know, Go ahead. Uh, sorry, I was going to say the chosen tracks, like the reason why they were so hard to do is because I didn't label shit. It was like one song had 25, 30 versions and I just didn't even, I would just know by the date, Yeah, you know, I, the names would be like, Mix one, mix two, mix 2.2, 2, mix 2.4, mix six, mix five, mix nine. And then it just kind of like, at some point they just become blah, you know? It's yeah. Just all, so, um, yeah, it's just tough. I'm not, I've never been a good, or because when I was growing up and I went to college, I went to school and stuff, computers weren't like the thing. It was, I was on that cusp, you know, mm -hmm. uh, where it became a thing. So I just never really got into the habit of organizing my files and shit. It was just kind of like, yeah. oh, I'll remember. Yeah, I'll so, figure it. I'll just, yeah. I'll, I'll figure it. I'll just listen to it all. And then you go into and, doing it. And it's then, overwhelming. Yeah. Then the time you. comes you're overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you, you, you said the words. Yeah. I'm glad that you uh, brought up uh, your, your uh, upbringing a little bit there. We get back into that. Like you're, you're a college graduate, you know. Um, I, I, I did not graduate. You didn't, didn't graduate. graduate. Okay. System, no, I was managing system. I was working at First Interstate Bank doing wire transfers. Yep. I was yep. playing in system and I was going to school and it got really overwhelming and at some point I knew something was happening with system and I went to my counselor and I was like, bro, so here's the situation. We're about to get signed and go on tour. Cause I knew it was happening. We had already some label bites, but I was still going to school and still working. You know? Yeah. And I was like, what do I do, man? I'm getting really overwhelmed. He's like, listen, he's like, is this your dream? I'm like, fuck yeah, it's my dream. He goes, we'll be here five years from now. He goes, give yourself four to five years and go live your dream. Go do what you got to do. If it doesn't work out, we'll be here. Your credits will be the same as they were today. Oh, uh, that's like, cool. That's good but advice right there, man. He's like, but if you keep going for another year, because I had I had like two semesters left, you keep going for another year, that opportunity you're in right now won't be there. Yeah. This is one that will fly by. The school won't. What a great – I mean, I didn't go back because it blew up, you know, but – Yeah. And he that's said – That's a great counselor up, right there, man. He's a great counselor. My mom hated him at the time. I was like, what? You're leaving school? Like <laughs> – I'm like, mom, I'm doing what I love. And this is what's going to, it's working out. Like I'm pushing it. I'm, I'm managing it. We're not depending on anyone, but depending on us, we're handling this ourselves. And, um, at some point she had to agree, you know, she was, she was against it, but she still did it. And she, she's not my bit and has been my biggest supporter ever since she saw us release a record and get signed. You know, she was just yeah. very proud. So, but that's where it happened. It was just like, I didn't graduate because I didn't finish the last two semesters because I, the band came and it was like already going and I couldn't stop it. You know, I well, was 20 years old. Yeah. I have a similar story, except that mine was from high school. I had like two semesters left in high school and I dropped out to join the rest of my band. Wow. in Avenged Sevenfold. I had no I clue. You were young then. You're yeah. Young. I was, I was, uh, I had turned 18 on my very first two week tour with the guys when I was just filling in 
And then at the end of the tour, they asked if I wanted to join. I was just, I knew the guys because we all grew up here in Huntington Beach together. And I was just, I put my hat in the, or my number in the hat and said, you know, I could fill in for you guys, see if it works out. If not, it'd be a great experience for me because I'm an aspiring musician too. And I've never been on a tour. And they're like, yeah, let's give it a shot. And then the next thing, Amazing. the rest was I didn't history. Know that. Yeah. That's how John got in the band. He was Is filling it? in. Yeah, he was filling in. He just, he just worked. He just, we didn't want anyone else. Yeah. He just worked. You know? <laughs> That's perfect. You so we had an old drummer that broke his arm and shit, and uh, you know we were having issues. And uh, how did he break his arm? He smashed the wall. It was self-induced. You know, it was just kind of like he was that guy. No, nothing negative to say about him. Just yeah. he was like, you know, he acted in out in emotion that happened rick was coming to the next show it's like fuck now you can't play for a year um we had john was rehearsing had had, had another band that we were playing with in the same studio and he was like our bro you know like dude yeah. john should fill in so we all kind of asked john our own time and he came in and it was like that piece of the puzzle that you know our old drummer was more of a dancing like beat like dj guy you know more but his tempo was like like this you know, like okay. one song would start here and end here. And then John came in and it was like, Brr. you know what I mean? No, John. Yeah, you know, yeah just, no, John. We needed that because we're all dancers and groovers. Like have the drummer be that too. And our music just kind of, you know, this doesn't stay steady. Yeah. He made it steady. It worked out. We looked at each other. The first time he jammed with us, I was like, dude. This was it. You knew right then. Something, but let's not tell him yet. You know, <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta let him earn it a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It just worked perfectly, man. So, Amazing story for you too, bro. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Um, it was really funny, though. Uh, not funny. Um, I'm more curious about this because you said it um, in a couple of the interviews. You're saying it here that you were managing when uh, the band when it was early on. So you were you were taking that uh, business aspect and that that hustle um, um, uh, early on. I'm just curious, how long did that last? When did you guys finally get your manager? Three years, bro. Um, from ninety, our first show was in ninety five. So we started late ninety four. And I just kind of took the reins. I was actually, before System of a Down existed, Darren and Serge were in another band called Soil. And I was rehearsing in the same complex with another band I was doing called Roswell at the time. And um, I kind of loved what they were doing. Their music was badass. But imagine it was like seven System of a Down songs in one. Okay. There was like no um, no hook. No, It was just like brrr, all these crazy riffs coming in. It was crazy. It was like a very experimental shit. And um, hey, Proggy? Proggy, very proggy. And um, that's what you get when you put six a system of a down song together. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could already envision it. Like w- without the hooks and without the choruses, like, oh, it's shit, like, man, that'd be riff, wild. Riff, riff. Yeah. riff after riff. Riff, riff. Vocal, riff <laughs> vocal part, riff, different vocal part, riff, different vocal part, and the song. So it was like no unison. Anyways, but I really loved it. And um, they asked me, they were like, man, you're, you, you're, you hustle. Uh, you want to represent us? And I'm like, Sure, I love what you do. Let me see what I could do. I've never managed before a band, so I kind of did what I could. Uh, and before I could really get them any gigs or do what I got to do, they kind of self imploded a little bit mm. with the bass player leaving, drummer leaving. And then Darren hit me up and was like, Man, we love your vibe and your playing when you come and pick up the bass. I was like, But dude, I haven't been playing bass as long as you've been playing guitar because I was a guitar player. I started off as a guitar player from 13 and like pick up the bass at like 18, 17 gotcha. or 18. So I was only like a year or two in. And uh, he's like, no, dude, it's about your vibe. It's about what you're doing. You're not, because I wanted to play bass as a meat and potatoes guy. I didn't want to be a virtual. At the time I was a guitar player. It was hard to find a bass player that really fit the mold of bass playing. It was for mm-hmm. me. Um, it was mostly like guys that just picked up a bass and couldn't really follow or guys that have been playing for 10, 15 years who want to do Less Claypool, and yeah. it just didn't work for me in my genre of what I want. So I was like, "Dude, I'm gonna go pick it up." So I traded in my Randall half stack for an Ibanez Sound Gear from Guitar Center, and I still miss that fucking Randall though. That shit was a bad. <laughs> um, it, 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 if you could have just hard. held on to both of them, you'd be you'd be fucking. At the stuck. time, there was no money, bro. I, yeah, totally. I was working at a bank doing wire transfers. You know, yeah, you know, put some money away. Um, so anyway, that happened, and. Um, they're like, let's just start a new band, man. Mm-hmm. Instead of you becoming the bass player of Soil, then we have to get a drummer. Let's just start something new with your presence. And so the rest was history. And we started System. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's a great story. I love how that, that, that all came together. For three um, years like that, just grinding away, working at First Interstate still, 
Um, after every wire transfer, I would hang up and call the Roxy and be like, yo, we, we need a show. What was, said, so what was know. the first system of a down show? Where, where was that at? Was May, it Roxy or? Yeah. Roxy May 28th, 1995. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I didn't realize that. Like, yeah, I saw, Great. I saw on the video, um, the prohibitive video though, too, like you weren't sure if you could, you could sell the 75 tickets, but it ended up selling yeah. 150, 150, 140, 150 tickets. Yeah. Cause we had a lot of people supporting us. Uh, we had a big studio, a warehouse studio in North Hollywood that we would, we started bringing like Friday nights. We'd have like, we'd go through our, we'd rehearse all week. And then Friday night would be where we're going to play our songs uh, just one after another, like a show. So we started bringing friends. So it's like a friend brought a friend. So after the fourth weekend shows, people were just like, dude, these guys are having like local shows. So we would have our own local shows in our, you know, rehearsal space. That's awesome. Friends, 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 friends. They would like become a lot of people. So when the show came around, we just kind of still did that as rehearsal. And, we sold tickets to all those guys. We're like, dude, there's going to be a real show happening at the Roxy. We need your support done. I'll take four. Like really? I'll, I'll take six. Like really? Hold on. I got to go get more tickets. So I called the guy. I'm like, dude, I think we need more than seven. He's like, what? He's like, yeah, we need more than 75. He's like, how many more? Like, Just give me 75 more. Yeah. He gave 75 more. We got rid of those. And, um, he was amped because, uh, the place was quiet. It was seven bands, uh, six ska bands and us, and mind you, we didn't have a demo tape yet because we couldn't oh. afford one. So the, he didn't know what we sounded like. He just knew we could sell tickets. So he was like, let's just yeah. put him in the middle of these ska bands. That's wild. So, yeah, bro. So these three ska bands played to about 30 people. And then it was our turn. It was about 20 minutes to play. We get up on stage and the 150 people come in and it was a chaos. And then we <laughs> get off stage, the 150 people leave. So again, yeah. 30 people left. So it's like, fuck, something just happened. Yeah. <laughs> and there yeah. was a writer at at the show that day for rock city news, which is the LA newspaper, mm -hmm. you know, and it was like, dude, something went down in LA on this Tuesday night. I think it was a Tuesday or what, maybe it was a Sunday. I don't know what it was, but like something oh, went down. So, uh, that kind of started up the whole thing. That's kind of, that's wild, man. Yeah. Cause your first shows and they're never, I mean, you know, like that's, that's, that's a rarity to have a first show with that many people on. Uh, we have it on video, bro. It's crazy. We have, I have it somewhere. My dad's filming with the big ass VHS. VHS shirt. one. Yeah. You said my that. My dad, cameraman. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. You said that you yeah. used to direct uh, 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 skate videos too with that same camera. Yeah, bro. With the same camera that he used for that. Um, I He would go to work and I would take it and we'd go skating with all the homies. And um, I would just be the guy, you know, you know, and then I had place it. And then I uh, took two, two VCRs and I would put it like an empty tape on the bottom one, hook them up with RCAs in the back, press that's play, right. And yeah, and just kind go back like, and forth, go back and forth, bro. And that's I used to do it with like credits and shit. And I still have one called Speed Boys I made a long time ago. I was fourteen. Did you? Uh, I mean, do, did you just make that for your friends, or is this like one copy uh, for friends? One copy, just me and I kind of let people watch it. And yeah, I have the original. It's actually there's a little bit of it in that prohibited video. I kind of let them borrow it, and uh, I just got it back actually from that time. They had they had kept the the, the VHSs, and but yeah, bro, that's. It was always like I didn't know I was directing or editing and making a being a videographer. I just was doing it because it seemed so fun to do. Yeah, you know, yeah, I love that and, uh, tinkering around and figuring some shit yeah, out. And then years later, now it's like you can do that shit on your phone, bro. It's like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. insane now. Yeah. Like the, the difference. Yeah. Um, speaking of some differences, though, uh, I know you're a big uh, advocate for cannabis, and you got your uh, red, uh, your your twenty two red. Uh, I mean, it's got clothing, it's got everything. Everyone can go check it out at. 22 red LA and shop dot 22 red.com. Um, yeah. tell me a little bit about this pot that this passion project you have. I mean, I, as I said, I saw a little bit on the prohibited, but for those who haven't seen it, I mean, I, I, you predominantly, I know you're, you're into the cannabis and you're really into the CBD from what I can see. Um, which I'm a big advocate of all this as well. Oh yeah. Um, we, we have to get you some then I would love some. I, 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 I I'll, I'll have some sent to you for sure. Killer man. For um, but yeah, I just want to know, like, are, are you also, um, uh, doing the THC as well? Or are you off yeah. that since? Oh, okay, cool. I wasn't sure because no, no, I do. No, I, I, when I stopped the Xanax, I had to prove to myself, I'm stopping everything. I, yeah, I have totally. drinks now, I have drinks, but I don't get fucked up, you know? Totally. Um, and same thing with pot. I took like a year off of everything. Like I had to know that I could survive being completely sober, bro. I had to prove that to myself, you know? Yeah. And I did, 
yeah. and I took it for, and I was like, there was this time I was like, man, it'd be nice to take a hit off a fucking joint, you know? And uh, I was doing a, I had moved an old storage space to another place. I was like cleaning up the clutter. And there was this guy that was helping me from the storage spot. And he was a grower and he was like, yo, I have, this is my weed. Please. I'm like, yo, I don't smoke right now. Uh, but I kept it. Yeah. And when the time was right, I was like, I told wifey, I was like, babe, I feel like I want to smoke again. And she's like, man, make sure you're good. It's not going to start you off on other shit. I go, let me try it at home, you know, daytime. Mm-hmm. Smoke it felt like a million dollars, bro. I was like, this is 11 missing. It was, it was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was the old friend coming back. At first it was a little paranoia because they teach you so much there. Cause it's like you do six, six out, six sessions a day, an hour each of like full on like therapies, group sessions and shit. So you, you're like washed, you know, you're clean. And like you touch this, you're gone, you know? Yeah. So it was a year later. And after I smoked it, I got a little paranoid. So I was like, oh, did I just fuck up? Did I just like, did I just like totally just rewind and I'm back to where I was? Oh no, you know? But as soon as the high just kind of like Mellowed out. settled out. Oh, dude, no, I'm cool. Like, I don't want to do that shit. That shit made me terrible. Look at me now. I'm boom, boom. And, uh, yeah, I've been smoking since. Uh, again, um, not like I don't get high all day, you know, because I no, like no. to function. Uh, I was always a functioning stoner, but not like I can't smoke indica all day and, like, work and be the guy I'm being right mm-hmm. now. Um, so I kind of gradually started smoking. But always since the legalization, everyone's been saying, man, you should have a sh- Shavo strain. You should do a company. Blah. And I was just like, man, I'll just smoke it. You guys do all that. Uh, when 2017 came around, um, one of my friends, he's like a really awesome grower, very like legendary now. But I didn't know that. I just mm-hmm. thought he just grew his backyard or his like garage, you know. Then he showed me one of his grows. And this shit is like where it's the standard of growing today. That's He started this whole like. Right. Game plan. And, um, like the dude's like amazing and, uh, like a revolutionary when it comes to growing. I was like, this shit I could fucking represent, man. I go, this is quality. This won't taint my reputation by saying the guy just does it, is doing it. I didn't want to do it. I, I think the, um, I, th- I think the cannabis community is really strong and I didn't want to taint it with like some c- commercial, um, yeah, slap your Liberty name on brand. it, put like a yeah. smiley face or some shit like that. You know, you wanted to keep I it. I didn't want that. I yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Brand. Yeah, so my name's not there. We thought a lot about the name. It was 22 is my birthday. Mm-hmm. I'm born on May 20. I mean, I'm uh, born April 22nd. I was married May 22nd. My two boys are two years and 22 days apart. Jesus. Yeah, uh, seven, nine, you know, both born in September, 8th and 30th. Like, wow. I counted once, I was like, Dude, those 22 fucking days in two years, like two are just so that became cool. my thing. And so I was like, I'd rather be kind of like have a cool name, always have quality, do the right thing. Something might happen and it's happening. So I'm staying true to my thought process. The quality has to be the best. Mm-hmm. When I say the best, I mean, I, I need to smoke it daily. It's got to be what's in my joints. I don't smoke something else and sell something else. Yeah. Um, every strain that we, um, bring out is tested for a long time before. So it's not like we grow it and here it is in the bag. Yeah. Or, or Let's go see what happens with it. You it know, has yeah. to be like third, fourth round. Make sure we know how to grow that specific. Every strain is grown differently mm-hmm. um, in, in different circumstances, you know? Uh, so yeah, bro, we're at a spot where I don't have one negative review of the strains or our clothing. Our, our apparel is like untouchable. It's all things you can wash where you don't even the branding is so minimal. I only like put something small on it just so you know it's that, but I don't want to be like, look at me, Givenchy or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of mellow, but wearable. So it doesn't matter what the brand is, you would wear it because it's so comfy. And so like it doesn't shrink and it's great, you know? So that's what I'm trying to do with cool little things. I got little messages in, in inside the clothing, like on the inside of it. And then the same thing with the boxes of our strains. Like you open it up, there'll be a message inside about 22, some kind of like, Cool vibe. Di- uh, is it something something different every every like uh, something different? Every strain has another box that comes out. That has yeah. Another message, yeah, and the messages change every like six to eight months. Okay. Uh, so that's we're having fun stuff, man. You know, like I love the logo we came up with. It's very rock and roll. I feel like the tubes are very like metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and especially the red. I liked how you talked about what what 
the colors meant to you because I, I, at least in writing music, I don't have it in numbers as much, but like in music, when I hear something, I see a color and you were saying like when you uh, probably have that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Numbers always have had colors for me, like one, two, three, every number has had a color, but I didn't think that that was like, not everybody was like that. I thought every, mm. everyone had a color for a number. Also letters have number be colors, you know, like ABC, they have letters, uh, colors in my head. Songs too, bro. Songs, parts songs, of songs. Yeah. That's why like Pro Tools and stuff really works for me when I was working because it's like all in colors. Yeah. So I would like design shit and then it would be like, oh, it also sounds good, but it looks good too, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's called Synesthesia. I didn't even know that. I looked that up, you know? Someone looked it up for me when I was coming up with- Oh, shit. Why is- I didn't know there was a name for it, but I've, I've talked yeah. to enough people that I know that, that, that you know, uh, uh, color association is a big thing. I think it probably has a lot. I mean, you could talk to it probably more, but does that have anything to do with the way that we learn our letters and numbers when we're kids? I don't know. I, th- I don't know because my boys, so I take them to school and we were having a talk. When I came up with the name, I was coming up with the name, right? It, it wasn't 22 Red yet. Yeah. And it was going to be Shavo this. And I was like, no, man, I don't want to use our name, my name. And we were driving, and I always talked to my kids. Like, I always involved them in things. Yeah. When I came up with 22 Red, my, my, my eldest, Shavo, he, he goes, um, why Red, Dad? Why 22 Red? I said, well, you know, twos are, twos are red for me. He's like, really? Twos are red for you? Because twos are white for me. And I'm like, mm. he's got it. And then my <laughs> other one, I have no clue. He's like, no colors and numbers. <laughs> yeah. So no, it's not every, everyone's different. Have, the other one does. So it's, that's when I was like, oh, okay, it's different for everybody, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, my my son is, he sees like tens in numbers. Like one through 10 is a number. 20s has a, like the 20s are a color. Have a color. Right? Got, yeah, I got you. Color. 30s are a color. 40s are a color. It's different colors. Not like one, one two, three, four. Mine yeah. are like one zero, you know? Yeah. So yeah, bro. So that's the whole thing with 22 red. It's, I just want to make sure that it's always quality that's yeah. number one i'd rather not have themselves and be like out than put something that's b-league in my jar and try to sell it to the customers i'm sure a lot of people won't even know but i know so i would not want that you know totally yeah no that's that that's cool you got you got to keep true to yourself on that that's that's uh it, it looks like some good shit i cannot wait to try it now that you're now that you're uh, you telling me you about it. yeah i do and you're in huntington and i'm in huntington not too I'm far buddy too. I need to get you some shit. Yeah, well, we got to hang out in person sometime soon. Here, when yeah, when we sure. when it's a when the optics look look better about it. <laughs> it's getting better now, right? It's, it's a, I think so. I mean, yeah. more and more people are getting vaccinated. My wife already had the had the virus. It went through our house. We're all well healthy now. Yeah. I had the virus. You had the virus. I didn't. I didn't get it. Or if I did, I didn't show symptoms. I haven't tested for the antibodies. I was just like, well, you know, I was around my wife. I mean, we quarantined her to her bedroom when she like was legit was you know fucked for like five days and then still tired for another 10 days after um i had the same exact thing that amount of time it was like did you did you lose your did you lose your smell and taste i didn't lose taste i lost smell oh wow okay for a long time though bro it was like when i was already getting better is when i lost the smell it wasn't like from right away it i didn't just start really not smelling. So, so like the four, first three days were the worst right that's like the pains and the mm-hmm. headaches body aches and then the fifth day is like, I was fine. I was like, just feeling tired and not myself yeah. for a long time though. That not myself feeling happy. That's the worst part of it. And it never hit my lungs. It never, I never coughed. I didn't have a cough. That's kind of just went away. I smoke with, they say, I don't know if it's real, but they say that smokers. I've heard this too. Yeah. Less prone to getting that, the chest thing. I don't know why though. That's kind of, uh, yeah, I don't, that doesn't uh, seem to really make a lot of sense to me, but I've heard that too. I haven't, I mean, I'm not diving into it though. And like, I'm not a scientist. Nah, Someone not else trying to say go smoke. Yeah, no, no. no I'm not complaining. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah no. My no. wife, my wife had all those symptoms. She still doesn't. She still her taste and smell still hasn't completely returned, and she had it back in uh, at the very end of December and beginning of January. It's still not back. Not I got it in January. I got it in mid January. It went away by late January, but yeah. the smell went was gone throughout February. But yeah. I've had it for like the last two months. I yeah, it's just it's it just goes to show you it's so weird how it's reacting to different people's bodies. You know, it's just it's a very different yeah. thing. But you know, and then you know, I had a headache for a couple of days after I was around her, but that could have been from the hangover from New Year's. You know, I don't know. And you could have, yeah, for <laughs> <laughs> the headache is where it starts, though. It starts with the headache, though. Yeah, uh, like wifey got it because um, I I didn't know I had it, bro. Um, no, I you... got it in the studio. I went in the studio with some people, and I. It was on a Wednesday. I was there. Saturday, I started having symptoms. 
she started having symptoms Tuesday. She was with me though, like, the whole time. Yeah. You know? So we just quarantined for two weeks and the doctor was like, you guys are good now. You guys are not contagious anymore. So we started kind of, but it's great because it was like kind of having the shot. Cause, oh, uh, totally. Yeah. You have the antibody, you know, so I kind well, of. Well, you got squeaked. lucky, lucky that the symptoms weren't, you know, super bad, you know, and then oh, it, no. it was a relief for me too. Even when my wife just got and she got through it, you know, it was like, it was like, okay, well, you know what? we can start to do things again now. Like this mm-hmm. is, you know, so there's a silver lining in everything. If you really want to find it. Right. 100%. Yeah. Um, last thing I got to ask about and kind of, it's kind of a, in a humorous manner, but um, again, when I had John on the show, uh, I mean the, the songs aren't humorous, so don't, don't get me wrong there. But uh, last time I had him on the show, we, we made a little joke um, and it was, who do you think is going to release new music before? Uh, System of a Down or Avenged Sevenfold because we both like we haven't let released any new music in a while now. Uh, how long has it been for you guys? Oh uh, shit! When did we release our last record in 2017? It hasn't been. It's not 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 in the same ballpark. Four years, yeah, yeah. Not but, no 15, yeah, yeah. It's 15. It's not in the same ballpark, but it was still funny because like if you read social media, like people want your guys' new record, they want Avenged Sevenfold's new record, and they don't let up, like no matter what. They do not let up. Oh, and you can crazy. say something about your kid, and they'll be like, where's the next album? Like, yeah, it's insane. So we, yeah. made a, we made like a little joke kind of wager, and he was like, you guys for sure, there's no way. And then obviously everything that happened in, in uh, Armenia, you guys released those three songs to, uh, yeah. for charity. Um, so I guess you guys won because you you released new music before us. Now it's not a whole album. The cause sucked though. The the reason for the drop wasn't so great, but I'm glad yeah. we got to get together. Really, I really love playing with those guys. Like it's, it's my passion, you know. So it was a fun two weeks. Yeah, you guys. So you guys knocked all those. You knocked those three songs out in two weeks and got them out right in away. Three days, really. We did it in three days, but it was like a two week process of doing everything. But then I directed the videos and helped with the executive producing of them. So. I worked for a couple of months after doing like the genocidal humanoids. And then I helped with uh, protect the land video too. Cause I always have, vi- you know, there's always a, anytime I could do a video for any, but like I hear your song and I see my, I see something in my head, you know? Yeah. I love Very imaginative. Yeah. It's such a cool passion to like be able to bring that out and have people see what you saw is a really cool vibe. It's like, you know, I'll bring this up. The song question was a dream of mine. I had, um, in uh, Germany on tour, I woke up in Berlin and I was like sweating. And I was like, the dream was like, I bur- was burning. I was on fire. It was like, so I was sweating. I, th- I thought I might've had a fever. I don't know. But, um, and it was about reincarnation, the dream. Okay. With this like bird turned into all these people. And so when all of a sudden we're doing the question video and I was going through all the treatments of all the directors, like I, usually what we do is if I'm not directing it, I'll get all the treatments. And I'll read through them. I'll weed out five to ten, and I'll mm-hmm. then I'll go from five. I'll weed out three, and I'll give those to the bandmates, and then they'll choose the best one. All we'll all vote for that, you know. And bro, just out of the twenty thirty, I read it's like nothing, nothing touching it better than my dream. Yeah, <laughs> my dream was the fucking song, and so I I wrote something up and I just put it in with the rest. I didn't want to do it because I know what it takes to do a video. It's like we were on tour. I just wanted to fucking be a band, you know? I don't want to be a direct because it's like you got to prep for it. You got to shoot it. Then you got to do the after stuff, the yeah. post. It's oh, dude. It's a, it's, a, it's a serious undertaking. Yeah, yeah. No one sees it like that. They're like, oh, it's easy. You think of an idea and it's done. No, bro. Yeah, you have to figure out how to shoot that and make it happen with the budget that they're giving you, you know? Mm-hmm. Luckily, we had a big budget for that. But anyways, just to say that. That was, back, I, that was back in the day when they actually paid for music videos, right? Wow, bro. Yeah. The video <laughs> budget we had, we could make feature films out of. Yeah, oh, man, I miss those days though. Just for just for the the creativity that you'd see out of out of artists with, because you know a budget kind of can stifle your creativity when you're talking about making a music video or a movie or something like that. Oh. So. Nowadays, like for all the North Kingsley shit, like bro, my budget was like three to five k, you know, seven k, like maximum, and I was like, fuck. Then I'm calling people up, and everyone's like, but you yeah, know, this is how much my people cost, and this is what I'm like, fuck, dude, that's we're gonna get half of, you know, what I'm thinking we should do, and um, yeah worked it out you know but it's yeah man the budgets are so different now and even though we're not shooting on film anymore and we're shooting digitally now because i used because i'm pro at using film i got used to it i got used to the telecining i got used to all that stuff and uh now digital which is like easier and you can shoot as much as you want uh there's no like any lack of film you know yeah uh, but yeah there's a there's the good, there's the good and the bad of everything now, you know, there's, it's the, 
you could shoot a whole video with your phone, bro. Yeah, you know no, exactly. No, I do. I, I, I do, especially since the pandemic, my, my director who was doing stuff in person uh, for me before he had his own camera and he'd come in and, and film this show for me. And then I was like, and he moved to Pittsburgh to be close to family. He's just had a kid. Congratulations again, Brandon. Congrats. And uh, he, he moved back to his hometown and uh, I was like, well, I got to get a camera. And then he was like, Dude, just get a new iPhone uh, 12 Pro, dude. You know, <laughs> like for what you're doing right now. And then now that we're starting to get, we're going to be starting to do some in persons here real soon. And right. uh, I'm going to get a camera for that because it, it doesn't have you. You know, it it it, you, it can be done, but it doesn't have the ability to get the the right shot when you have a couple people. Yeah, like I that. mean, you can do it, but it's not ideal. Like it's, exactly. You know, like I see people, like I see filmmakers, like I follow some pages where they do some crazy shit with an iPhone, and then they show how it was done. Yeah, it, it wasn't. It wasn't just like doing this, and then like you gotta. Yeah, like, there, there's there's, there's some tricks to it if you're gonna do that. The tricks are necessary, but like, but then I come to think of it, with like TikTok nowadays, like honestly, on that app, there's better. Wait, you have a TikTok? Like, I have a TikTok, yeah, but I don't really use. It. I have like three pages, or three posts on it that are funny. I just did some cool shit, yeah. but um. I haven't done the crazy things yet, but I'm doing that with North Kingsley. We're doing cool videos because we're, we're, we all have a sense of humor, like really big sense of what well, big, big sense of humor. So okay. we're always, uh, we're always making jokes and making funny shit. So we're like, why don't we just make 15 second clips? You know, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. We're doing this Batman Robin thing where I'm Robin and, um, Ray. Oh, Batman. I've seen, I've so, seen yeah. a little bit of that where you're like, we were talking about like Robin being on the couch during quarantine and shit. Yeah. Like that. But that was, the video wasn't that, but the, I did a picture of that. Like, yeah. You did a picture of that on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. I don't have a TikTok yet. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. That's why I, I don't know enough yeah, about this. Yet. We're using reels, more uh, reels on Instagram to do that. It's like, it's kind of like expression, I guess. It's a fun way of and like having the audience see a different side of us then. Cause when they listen to the songs, like before it was so important to keep your, identity you know like we're a serious band we have to you know we sing serious songs yeah we sing serious songs with north kingsley all this shit's very political social very cool it's very thought out but then we have fun bro we're like having fun dancing in, in a batman outfit like what the fuck like just funny quirky like monty python vibe shit that well, most just because you're serious their- <laughs> yeah just because you're serious in one aspect of life doesn't necessarily mean you need to be that all the time that's oh, no. that's just that's not real life like i know no. back in the day that was like you know, for artists and stuff like that, they, they really, you know, and it worked for them. But like now I think people are starting to see it. Like we are, we could be artistic. We could be deep. We could be all that, but we could also just have some fucking fun. Like that's and like, imagine if back in the day though, like, um, you couldn't see Tony Iommi, like fucking no dude. No, Robin Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> no, that shit just wouldn't fly. Black that shit it was, it was just... Black Sabbath. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's different era, bro. We live yeah. there. So, we, we love doing that. I do have a TikTok, like I said, but I don't really um, post too much on there. Yeah, um, you do the North Kingsley. Movie. Everyone could go to Instagram, though, and find North Kingsley, just at North Kingsley. Is yes. it the same at for At North Kingsley, at Shavo Odajian, um, uh, both of them, at 22 Red LA. For at 22 the, Red LA, like you said. Got, yeah. We're, uh, it's like, you know, it's, that's my only marketing tool at the moment. You know, yeah. it's just kind of sad yeah. with all the algorithms and shit going haywire. You know, dude, that, that's all I'm using right now for this show, too. You know, I'm just using my personal and then, you know, the show's got all the social media. I think that our TikTok is going to be just the show. We're just figuring out what we're going to even do with it. I mean, I right. make I make a bunch of stupid shit all the time. Like I got a bunch of stupid skits in my head that I just haven't filmed yet. But I don't know it's if we'll funny put it though there when you or... do it. I mean, the editing tools on that is just so crazy. You could slow the speeds down, speed uh speed them up, slow them down. You can do like reverse shots. You can do reverse. It's just things that, that you would have to get a whole editing. Like back in the day, it would be a whole software. You have to yeah. learn. You have to go to classes to do this shit. And this is now they just have it on your phone. Boom, boom, boom. You know, like, yeah. That's wild. To me. I'll probably still have my director to handle all the technical part of it. Right? I just don't, I don't, I don't want to learn either, bro. I, dude, I, 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 I love, I, I love tinkering like you, when you were talking about the VHS tapes, dude, I was doing that not for skate videos, but I was doing that to like put together my own, like, uh, little clips from all my favorite movies, and I'd, I'd do like these long clip outs, or or I'd, I'd get old stereo equipment because you know we didn't we didn't we couldn't afford the new stuff, so I'd get old stereo equipment and make it work with my new boombox so that I had like an assembly of of a subwoofer, but it wasn't. Quick story before we're done because it's getting late. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the I learned how to make so I, I lived in L.A. on North Kingsley Drive, um, mm-hmm. and um, you know. 
my apartment had a big garbage bin, right? And in, in the parking lot where I would skate up and down the big ramp, right? It was not a ramp, like made ramp. It was like just a ramp. The cars go down. I would use that as a skate area. That was my skate park before there were skate parks all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, and someone had thrown away this old v- VHS player, really old one, but it had a button on it. I'd never seen before in the newer shit. It, it had a dub button. It's called, it was a dub. Ah. Was, what is this? Right. So, I took the, I just took it from wherever it was and I put it in and I put the VHS on top of it and the, the, the old VCR and bro, as I play, press that button, the, all the audio went on the other tape, no video. So I was like, here's how I score my shit. That's so, amazing. So now I was like filming the speaker. I, I put, let's say a Metallica or a, a Misfits track on and I would record the speaker, and then I would put that VHS into the dub one, press dub, and the Misfit song would end up on the skate video, bro. So I was like, oh, oh like, right? Look at the things we fucking went through. You know, yeah. to do what we're doing. Oh, everyone's you know? listening right now to this conversation. If they're, if they're below a certain age, they're like, what the shit is a VCR? But what's a VCR? <laughs> VCR is where we used to play all our videos on. It yeah. was before the Blu-ray, before the DVD. You know, it was, uh, <laughs> it was when Blockbuster was killing you know, uh, the last blockbuster. You got to watch that if you haven't already on Netflix. But I'm going to let you go now. We could we could continue talking, but we're oh, going to wait. Let's proud. do that in person. Um, yes, everyone, sir. go check out North Kingsley and more from Shavo. Twenty Two Red, all these wonderful things we talked about. Thank you again so much for your time, Shavo. Thank you, and uh, uh, we'll stay in touch. All right. Yes, sir. Please, you got my number. Call me anytime. And that's going to do it for this week's episode of Drinks with Johnny. Thanks for tuning in to the YouTube channel here. Make sure you're subscribed. Thanks to Shavo for being on again. Leave us some comments. What was your favorite part of this episode? I had so many. Um, again, thank you guys. Head over to drinkswithjohnny.com for more Drinks with Johnny. Everything. We got merch. We got a newsletter you could sign up for. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And as we talked about here on this episode, soon to be a TikTok, I guess. So uh, I guess that's it for now. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.